Have you ever met a famous artist? Well, guess what? <laughs> I have. His name was Vincent van Gogh, one of the greatest artists in the world. And guess what? He was my friend. So you must be wondering, how in the world did I, Camille Roulin, the son of a postman of Arles, get to be a friend of this famous artist? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you the story. It was a long, long time ago when it all happened, and I was only ten. That February day in 1888 was a cold one, and there I was, climbing over snowdrifts, helping my dad in our little village of Arles deliver mail. Now, we had just dropped off our last letter to the yellow house on Lamartine Place when I heard the familiar whistle of the 3.30 train from Paris arriving to our little town in the south of France. Well, we had just stopped for hot chocolate at the Café de la Gare near the station when minutes later... We saw the strangest looking man walking toward us. What a sight he was, with his red beard and paint spotted blue jacket, arms filled with canvases, dragging his wooden easel through the snow. Wow, I cried. Could this be a real, honest to goodness French artist? Hey, Dad, let's invite him for hot chocolate. This funny looking stranger was an artist, all right, but he was Dutch. Van Gogh's hand hoit. Van Hog. Van Hocht. Van Hocht. Van Gogh. And since I couldn't pronounce his last name, sounding like Van Gogh, <laughs> he said, Oh, just call me Vincent. And so I did. Not only did I get to know Monsieur Van Gogh, but I watched him paint many of his precious masterpieces that hang in museums all over the world. In fact, he painted my whole family. My dad, the postman, my mother, brother, sister, and me. Not only once, but many times. What are your favorites? The Yellow House? Starry Night? Maybe his famous bedroom? Mine? are all his sunflowers. I guess partly because I used to get up before the sun and race to Vincent's studio with armfuls and watched him paint two or three before the sun went down. Do you know he made 11 sunflower paintings in all? And three of them decorated his friend Paul Gauguin's guest bedroom in Vincent's yellow house. Not only did Gauguin love those sunflowers, but he painted a portrait of Vincent painting them. Vincent loved the yellow sun and blue skies of Arles, and it seemed like only yesterday when I would lie in the grass watching him paint our beautiful red poppies, tall irises, and haystacks in the fields. He would swirl and twirl so many thick mounds of colors on his canvases that they would take months and sometimes years to finally dry. But oh, were they beautiful! One day, on my 11th birthday, Vincent surprised me with my very own paints, palette, and easel. But I can't paint, I cried. Vincent? smiled at me and said, If you hear a voice saying you are not a painter, then by all means, paint, and that voice will be silenced. And so I did. Soon after, I was painting in yellows and blues, just like Vincent. Each day, we used to paint in the hot sun together, and then after the sunset, we glued candles to our straw hats so we could paint the stars at night. We were teased and laughed at, and children threw stones at us, but Vincent and I just went on painting. Poor Vincent. I think he was only happy when he was facing an empty canvas with a brush in his hand. Just imagine how he must have felt doing 1,100 drawings and 900 paintings, and then 
No one wanted to buy them. It's sad, isn't it, that now, after his death, people are willing to pay millions for a single painting. There were many days when he went without food, and once I saw him using mustard on one of his paintings because he couldn't afford more paint. Well, sure, I know all the letters from his brother, Theo, with money for paint and food lifted his spirits. But when an argument caused Paul Gauguin to leave Arles, Vincent fell further into the dumps and cut off his left earlobe. Soon after, my friend Vincent had to leave Arles and go to a hospital heartbroken. I dashed over to the yellow house and raced up the steps to his beloved bedroom. There, hanging by his bed, were the yellow straw hat and his favorite paint-smeared blue jacket he always wore. I know my friend left them for me. And as you can see, I wear them to this day. I was just about ready to leave when there, lying on the red blanket of Vincent's yellow bed, I spied a letter addressed to me, to Camilula, the postman's son. It contained only one line. If you hear a voice saying you can't follow your passion, then by all means go for it, and that voice will be silenced. Thank you.